This video shows a straightforward way I've found of turning high-density polyethylene milk bottles into solid sheets. Just a bit about high-density polyethylene. Its recycling symbol is the number 2. It's food safe, allegedly, which is why it's used so much for food packaging. Apparently it's safe to ingest as well, but I'd rather not put that to the test. This method uses materials that aren't hard to find. I'll explain what they're all used for, so it shouldn't be hard to substitute something I use that you don't have handy. You'll need four sections of channel iron or cable tray, two baking trays that you won't use for food anymore, six washers of equal thickness, an eight kilogram brick, oven gloves, an oven, and obviously lots of milk cartons. Cut the bottles into sections. This makes it easier to form stacks, but if you have a massive oven, you could probably put the bottles in whole. I found that milk bottles with a glued on label, the bit of plastic that the label is glued onto won't melt properly even if you carefully pull off the label. So cut away with the bit of label on it and discard it. Or else just use milk bottles that have a shrink wrap label that you can just pull off. Once the milk bottles are cut into sections, weigh out 150 gram for a stack. I found this is a good starting point. Put two sections of channel iron at the bottom of the oven, then put a baking sheet on top. This does two things, the channel iron takes the weight to make sure the baking sheet doesn't bend, and it's ensuring good airflow so that there's an even heat distribution. Then put on the stack of plastic, and then the washers around that. The washers are used to set the thickness. Once it's all in the oven, set to 180 Celsius. It will take about 20 minutes for the plastic to melt. You will know by the hot and gooey look that it's ready. Press the other baking sheet down on top of the molten plastic until level. Be careful the washers don't fall out. Then set the other two pieces of channel iron on top and rest the 8 kilogram brick on top of the channel iron. Leave it in the oven for another 20 minutes, still at 180 Celsius. The channel iron is doing the same as before. It's preventing the baking sheet from bending and ensuring even heat distribution. I've noticed that the brick never really gets hot. So if it is in direct contact with the baking sheet, the plastic probably wouldn't get hot enough to melt. The weight of the brick will squash the molten plastic and should force out any air pockets. Remove the whole lot from the oven and allow it to cool in a stack until it's cold enough to touch with bare hands. I found that taking the weight off when the plastic is still hot will cause it to warp as it cools. As for fumes, I found there's no smell at 180 Celsius. I tried the oven at 220 before. It melted the plastic a lot faster, but there's a strong plastic smell afterwards. These sheets ended up around 5 mil thick. As you can see, they're quite hard and rigid and very lightweight. For actually using high density polyethylene sheets, I found a saw for cutting wood works quite well. The trimmings can be melted again, so don't worry about losing material. Putting a sheet underneath the cutting table catches everything, so there's no waste. I found drill bits for drilling wood also work quite well, but for putting holes in it, I found it easier to heat up a nail with a torch and drive holes that way. I'd imagine the hot nail method would be less susceptible to crack propagation than drilling. For bending the sheets, a strip heater would probably work best. I don't have one, so what I do use is a propane torch, gloves, and channel iron. Just run the torch along the line of the bend, on both sides and then bend with your hands. You can see that it's fairly fire resistant too. Just an example of something you can use this for. I made a shelf for my bike lock that sits in between the pannier rack and the saddle. You can see that I've put several holes and one bend in it. Then just some velcro to hold the lock in place. It's an ideal material because it's weather resistant and strong. High density polyethylene and food packaging is normally white, but you can use dyed ones as well. Here I used lids from water bottles to form a green sheet. I tried blue lids that felt similar to high density polyethylene, but didn't have the recycle mark on them, so I'm not sure what type of plastic it actually was. It obviously wasn't as viscous when it melted, it spread out very thinly, and this could possibly be low density polyethylene or LDPE with a recycle mark 4, but I'm not sure exactly. You could use this method for any common plastic as long as your oven can reach the forming temperature, but high density polyethylene is the only plastic I'd have a lot of. I try not to buy stuff in plastic packaging, but milk only really comes in high density polyethylene or Tetra Pak. I know back in the day it used to only come in glass bottles, but you don't see that in shops anymore. 
I've been doing this for quite a while, but when I looked on YouTube to see different methods, they all seemed a lot more labour intensive than what I was doing. Other videos I've seen involved cutting the bottles into tiny pieces with a scissors, stewing it in oil, building a mould in a press, blenderizing the plastic, melting it in a sandwich maker, all this kind of stuff. These methods did seem complicated, but their advantage was they were able to make blocks, whereas my method is only useful for making sheets. So, Guru Mahagut for watching, and if you make any cool stuff using my method, sure let me know in the comments. Slán August Banacht.